Hey guys, I just wanted to make a short little video and tell you a little bit about um, an experience that I had in 2007. Um, uh, first of all, I'm a photographer. I don't know if you guys read my profile or not, but um, professionally I've been taking pictures, um, I guess almost four years now, maybe three and a half, I don't know. But um, about a few years ago, I had sent in a, a uh, I filled out a resume and an application um, to be a photographer for um, a magazine tour. And I'm not going to like get into details or whatever because I'm not here to promote that magazine by any means. And so I just want to tell you a little bit about an experience that I had. Anyways, um, back then I always thought that, you know, God gave me these talents for me. Like I was going to be somebody and I was, you know, going to go out there and get approval from, I don't know, peers, my parents, friends, and you know, I don't know, I guess I just wanted to feel like I approved me um, by being this big shot or whatever. Anyway, so I go on this photography tour and there's a lot of drunk people. Um, my job basically was to set up a uh, display and a little stage, if you will, and there was this big round, um, sounds kind of bad, but there was this big round beanie bed and there would be some models sitting on it and men would come up to them, you know, and they'd pretend like to be dripping, uh, dropping grapes in their mouth, you know, for pictures. Um, so that was pretty much um, really corny and, and now I look at it as really stupid. But anyways, pe men would line up to sit on this beanie bag and to get pictures with these models. So that was my job. And I did that for, I don't know, maybe six hours and then it took another two hours to close down and pack up and then get on the flight and go to the next city. Well, um, I believe God gave me that job to show me that I really didn't want to be in that type of uh, <laughs> lifestyle because I was the only, uh, well, Christian who, who uh, walked around there with my faith on my arm. Um, I, I Back then I... Uh, this was before I rededicated my life to Christ, and I'll make a video about that, but I, I was still confused about a lot, um, about a lot of things, but it was, it, I know that it made me sick to my stomach to be around these big, you know, millionaire businessmen who had all these young women hanging all over them, and these women prancing around in, in practically nothing, and, I mean, this huge party and alcohol everywhere and it just it really didn't feel like I was going anywhere f with my photography talents if you know what I mean I kind of got sick of it but you know so and I was scared to fly and it was pretty lonely I had to leave my husband and my two kids you know for three or four days at a time and go um I think there was about I don't know 20 something cities on the tour and I actually, I didn't go to maybe a fourth of them, or I don't, I honestly, I don't remember how many it was, but it wasn't very many because I got, I couldn't be around that very, very long. But anyways, um, the last um, event that I did with that magazine was on our way back. We had just packed up. You know, it's a long night, we're tired, everyone's just cranky and ready to get home. Uh, we pack up, we go to the airport, and a lot of us, you know, are from all over the country, so we would go our separate ways. Well, thankfully, there were like two or three that were going on my plane. Of course, we didn't sit next to each other, but it just felt comforting and knowing that somebody I worked with or somebody I knew was in the same airplane as me. Um, but anyways, I got... Um, my ticket was for seat one, and it was right next to uh, the exit door of all places, um, right in the front. And it was a small airplane. I don't know how many it seated, maybe, uh, I don't know, I want to say like 50. Um, I don't even think it was that much, but it was, a, it was a small airplane. So I'm sitting on this airplane, and right as soon as I sit down, I get this uneasy feeling. You know, I, I put my bag above the... Uh, the compartment, which was kind of like catty corner, 
behind me because I was the only seat up front and there was so many lines behind me and there was like nobody next to me. So I was pretty much right there by myself and there was the uh, flight attendant and he sat in a seat right before me, like on behind the, uh, on the other, the, the back side of, of the pilot door, a little seat flapped down and he was sitting there. Um, so anyways, I get on, you know, I'm sitting down and I'm buckled in and I put my cell phone and everything up in a bag and, um, ready to go. And I smell like this wire, it smelled like wire, that's all I can, um, explain it, but I, I, I don't know. It just, it was, I just had a bad feeling, okay? Do you ever get those bad feelings? I had a bad feeling. I really did not want to be on that plane, but I was so ready to go home that you know, I kind of tried to ignore the bad feeling. So anyways, I'm sitting there, and um, as we're flying, we're up there for about, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes at most. The, uh, it starts to really smell, okay, I can, I can smell it, and, and I remember, um, the flight at attendant came by, and he, you know, he asked me if I wanted a soda or something, and, and I said, do you, do you smell that, and he said, what, and I said, it, it just, it smells electrical, like something, it just smells weird, and he said, um, he said, oh, no, that's normal, you know, no, nah, that's just the plane, I'm like, no, I just, I just knew that it wasn't, you know, because I had flown, 20 something times before that like within a couple weeks or something so I knew the smell of the plane the air the fresh air the fresh air that comes down from the little thing that you twist I mean you know anyways I just knew that was wrong so we're standing there and um he's you know finally he gets a call on the little phone in there from the pilot I, I assume it was the pilot and he, he turns around quickly to where he's not facing us. Um, so immediately I knew something was wrong. And then he just kind of hangs up the phone and he motions me to go over and talk to him. And he said, look, um, I just want you to know that they're having some difficulties up there. Um, they're not sure, you know, what's going on, if it's the engine or what, but they're having, you know, um, some issues. So I just want, you know, since you're sitting on the exit, door I just want you to be aware and we need to talk over a plan just in case something happens and I look at this guy and automatically I am consumed with fear and the first thing that goes through my mind is oh my gosh am I ever going to see my kids again am I ever going to see my husband again you know and I'm thinking lord you know I, I know that I've I've lived pretty selfish lately and I just pray that you get me out of this because um you know my heart and I really just this isn't what I want 